It is the Tech Ed Podcast. I am your host, Matt Kirkner. We are live streaming on YouTube all week from the International Manufacturing Technology Show. Would you believe they surveyed the attendees at the show the last time? Nine out of ten said they came away with a new idea or a new technology for their business, for their institution of education, for wherever it is that they work. Now, what amazes me isn't that nine and ten said that they found something here that was interesting, a new idea or technology, but that one in 10 couldn't find anything because the truth of the matter is this is absolutely amazing. 2,000 booths here, tons and tons of exhibitors, and we are talking with one of them this morning, somebody who himself is no stranger to new technologies and new ideas. He's a great friend of mine, somebody I've known for a number of years. Tony Nicewander is the president and CEO of APT Manufacturing. We're going to learn all about the great work that Tony is doing not just in the world of manufacturing, not just in the world of integration, but in the world of education especially, because his organization is absolutely leading in the world of integrated technology, in the world of authentic manufacturing opportunities for students. So let's get into it. Tony, first of all, welcome to the Tech Ed Podcast. Thanks. I'm glad to to be a part of it. Appreciate that. Absolutely. You and I have done things like this in the past. We've done webinars together. We've done, uh, we've we've spoken together at conferences and so on. So it's just really fun to be on the stage with you again and spending some time here at IMTS. So my first question is this, you're a key partner to FANUC and and especially to FANUC's um, uh, automation group and education group rather. So so FANUC, for our listeners who may not know, largest largest robotics and CNC company in the world. You and I are both blessed to be very tightly tied to that organization. I tell people all the time, I don't know what I did in a prior life to deserve the opportunity to be a distributor <laughs> of FANUC products, but it must have been something really special because they are an amazing organization. Take just a minute, Tony, for our, for our listeners who might not be completely familiar with all the great things happening at, a, at APT, and tell us a little bit about what you're doing in the world of education. Sure. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. Um, so we started with, uh, with FANUC, and I believe it was 2015, and we built what they call their first ad- advanced manufacturing piece of equipment. So FANUC's always had, I shouldn't say always, but from 2011, 2012, what they call their CERT cart. But they wanted to incorporate integration into that and incorporate Rockwell into that. Today it's more than Rockwell, but um, in the beginning that's what we did. So it was an AM CERT, an advanced manufacturing certified educational robot trainer, And uh, we were blessed to be that that company. I had met Paul because I took some of our local students. Paul Aiello. Paul Aiello. And um, I took some of our local students and our local community college to FANUC. I knew they had an education group um, as an ASI or as an authorized system integrator on the industrial side. Mm -hmm. I didn't know much about it, but I knew that I I didn't build equipment for education at that time. Sure. So I had met Paul Aiello and John Potter and, and some different people there. And then we started a high school training program ourselves. And from that, our passion for education, Paul Aiello had asked me, hey, can you build this piece of equipment? Hmm. So that's what we did in 2015. That was the beginning of it. Today, we're an extension of FANUC. We don't stand on our our own as APT, but we are an extension of FANUC America on the education department. And doing some really amazing things. You mentioned some great people, Paul Aiello, the director of education, actually now the executive director of education. (laughs) for uh, for FANUC America, and Paul will be on uh, with us later in the week talking about all the great things that FANUC is doing in the world of education. Um, but just a great partnership that you and that APT have with that, that great organization, FANUC. You, you mentioned that you're um, you're obviously producing some really great solutions in the world of education, but, but you got into this because you were looking for skilled talent and you were trying to build your your talent. Your organization employs how many people? Where are you uh, located? All that. We're located in Northwest Ohio. Okay. Um, we employ about 100 employees. Um, we're one of FANUC's largest authorized system integrators, and, mm. and in the industrial side, that's called an ASI. Okay. And so we're in the top 15 out of seven, 800 integrators wow. in the United States. Yeah. And so in 2014, 15, we were growing from, we, we grew from around 50 employees to 100 employees in a three-year period. Crazy. And so I knew that education needed to be a part of that in training. So we started our own high school program. Hmm. We bring in four or five students every day as juniors and every day as seniors. Okay. And then we have an apprenticeship program cool. where we pay for all their college. Huh. So that's really the beginning of the passion for education was on the industrial side of, of saying, we need to train them up. We don't need to steal them. We need to train them. And so that's what we did. And, you know, you bring up some really interesting points. I was, I was chatting just uh, a little while ago with Michelle Leon of LaVille Technology, and we were, we were talking about um, the fact that, 
industrial employers, and the, you know, we call it the skills gap, we call it the lack of skilled talent, you know, are really, really hungry for great people to the point where they are willing to invest in their future education. So we can have students that are either still in high school, graduating from high school, going direct to workforce, which can yep. be a really, really great route to an amazing career, but they don't necessarily have to stop their education there. In fact, in this day and age, they can't stop their education. So as you suggested, you're, you're helping them invest in, in their continuing education while they're working at APT, is that correct? That is correct. So we offer several apprenticeship programs, a two-year, a three-year, and a four-year. Okay. Um, but they're working and getting paid 48, 40, 44 hours a week. Wow. And then they go to school two nights a week, and um, they got to carry a, a, a B average. They've okay. got certain things, criteria they got to So I wouldn't meet. have qualified? Is that yeah, what you're you might not, me, right? Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, and the other thing is we sign a contract with them. Okay. Um, they have to stay over two years after the apprenticeship. They're more than welcome to quit any time. They just owe their college back. But you know, today, it's a pretty big thing to have your college paid for. For sure, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, and I think for the students that listen, and we do have a number of students that listen to the Tech Ed Podcast every week, that's just such a strong message to me, is that you're a high school student and you're not quite sure about where you want your career to go, or maybe you know that you want to be in manufacturing. It's not an, we tell people it's not an or, it's an and. You can continue your education yeah. and get right into the workforce and, and making great money. I mean, we, oh, yeah. we say some of these, these kids, I call them kids, um, you can drive any pickup truck you want, oh, yeah. right? When, you, yeah. when, you're, when you're working full time um, right out of high school, it's, a, it's a really a great route to go. I want to turn our discussion now, Tony, to this whole idea of authentic technology. I think one of the things that, one of the many things that APT excels at is bringing authentic industrial experiences into the classroom. Those are really, really important things to me. As you know, I spent the majority of my career as a manufacturing yep. CEO running and leading manufacturing companies primarily in, in the Midwest and and saw just, just incredible careers. Um, and, and that was one of the reasons I think I got into education in the same way that you did is that I just have this, this real interest in how do we create these awesome career pathways and get young people excited about the incredible careers in manufacturing. And then I got into a lot of the you know, technical education, what we call technical education programs, and you, we go in there and there, there's like no authentic industrial technology, right. right? They maybe have a couple 3D printers, maybe they're doing some, you know, cool design project, and that's all good. But if the number one influencer of a young person's career pathway is their own interest and experiences of middle school and high school, and they're not seeing those technologies while they're in their education pathway, no wonder they're not coming into, yeah. into the world of manufacturing. So I look at the partnerships that you've managed to create. You talk about FANUC, largest robotics and CNC company in the world. It's interesting how many ways your life and my life you know, kind of converge and cross over. You talked about Rockwell being mm -hmm. Rockwell Automation, huge industrial automation, industrial controls company. If people are familiar with the brand, Allen Bradley, mm -hmm. that is that is their product. Kind of started out as the computer of manufacturing, if you will, and really even before we had computers, more you know, more the, the solid state technology and so on, and grew just an incredible um, incredible business in the world of automation. Their CEO, Blake Moret, has been a, he's a member of the Tech Ed Podcast Alumni Circle, so welcome to the circle. Blake was a phenomenal guest. Um, so you're a great partner to Rockwell. And I also have to tell you, when I was in manufacturing, our last company that we sold in 2014, our third largest customer was Miller Electric. Okay. So so in, in, the, in the world of welding, Mike Weller at the time was the CEO, became a pretty good friend of mine. He and I, as you and I have done, shared the stage at a number of manufacturing shows, got to know Mike pretty well, actually wrote a magazine column about him one time. So I, I want you to reflect a little bit on these incredible industrial relationships. You really are working with the leaders in welding technology and industrial controls and automation. Talk to us a little bit about why that's so important to you. So one of the goals that we have when we look at a piece of equipment to say we need to develop this, it's not, we don't develop it to just have another product. We develop it because we're looking at that piece of equipment saying if we hired that student that was trained on that piece of equipment, would it enhance them at our, at either APT or any integrator in the United States? Sure. So many times we have a student come in for an interview and it's a deer in the headlights and they walk on our floor and they're like, I've never been around this. Right. And so other students that, that um, in the schools that have industrial equipment, they walk in and they're very comfortable. Some of it's the feel of the equipment. Some of it's the guarding. Just to make them comfortable to say, I can pick up that teach pennant or I do understand Rockwell PLCs. They're not masters. But, but we really look at, a lot of people refer to three levels. And, and when I refer to it from an industrial side, I look at level one mm -hmm. as a hireable. Sure. So if we can make that student hireable and comfortable, that's the type of equipment we need. The second level is really maintaining my customer's equipment, the equipment I build at my customers. Okay. And it's a maintenance. And then the third is building from scratch. 
But all of the equipment that we build, we have that in the back of our minds of saying, are we going to train them on the equipment they're going to see in industry? Mm-hmm. And if not, why are we putting that in? Let's sure. let's throw cost out the window because we don't want it to be the we don't care if we're the cheapest or the most expensive, we want to be the best. Right. And we want that student to really feel comfortable on our equipment when they go to a job and say, Yeah, I'm I'm qualified for that job. So you mentioned two levels of the three. What's the third one? Third level is an integrator. Okay. So building equipment from scratch. So a lot of times um, when my customers, they're never going to start a program from scratch. Right. They're going to add a sensor. They're going to add a timer. They're going to retouch off the program, I mean the robot. Sure. But an integrator, we get all these brains in that are dumb. Um, they don't have anything on them. So it's like getting a computer in and you're loading all the software. And so in that respect, um, that's a level three where they're starting everything from scratch. Got it. I have to thank our producer, Melissa Martin, for pointing out that my tie was crooked. <laughs> Fortunately, the questions and answers have all been completely straight on, and that's exactly the way that we like to do things here at the Tech Ed Podcast. Speaking about being straight on and being direct, you know, I had a meeting last week, Tony, with a group of um, educators. I'm not going to say the state, but it was the statewide university system for you know, for a state in the United States, so it was a, a group of, of universities. They have a number of R1 research institutions. They have a number of engineering colleges, and and I say this what I'm about to say to to educators, especially at that level of, of you know university education, sometimes and they get offended. But one of the things that I hear from so many manufacturers is that we have students coming out of four-year engineering programs. Um, and they, boy, they can do calculus all day long, right? And they understand physics, and they've got all their what we call gen eds in the world of higher education taken care of, and they, they know that from one end to the other. But when it comes to integrating manufacturing technology, and that's why I'm glad you expounded on that last question, they get out on the shop floor, and, yeah, they may have done a little bit of ladder logic or something on a PLC. Yeah, maybe they learned a little bit about robot programming. But in the world of manufacturing, it's really putting all those things together. As you suggest, your customers are saying, we're going to augment the process, we're going to add a sensor, we're going to add a stack light, we're going to come up with a new way of controlling this process. Those are really, really important skills, I think, especially as we look at higher education, for whether students are coming through an electromechanical technology program, automation program, or a full-on you know, manufacturing engineer, electrical engineer. Talk a little bit about why it's so important for students, not just to understand those component technologies, but to understand that level three integration. Yeah, so, so what's been interesting is, is um, in education, a lot of times in the past, let's say in the past education, um, you're learning on a FANUC robot and you're learning FANUC, or you're learning a, a PLC from Rockwell, or you're learning Miller in welding. But how does the FANUC robot talk to the Rockwell? Right. So in industry, we pick up the phone and we call FANUC and they're like, no, nah, that's, that's Rockwell. Right. And you call Rockwell and they're like, no, that's FANUC. But what we need students to know is how does Rockwell and FANUC communicate and who takes the lead? Right. Are, we, are we PLC driven or are we robot driven? Somebody's got to take the lead on there. And we do the same with Miller. And um, looking at the Miller, the Miller auto continuum is what, mm-hmm. we, what we put on the robots. But it's not about just welding. It's about laying the best bead communicating with the robot to be in the right place and the right speed and the right feed to lay that nice bead. So it's really important, um, both in education and industry, that we're learning the integration portion, not just the silo portion. Got it. One of the things is you talk about Rockwell. Um, I spent a good, I don't know, 10 years, I guess it was, running um, as CEO of Rockwell Spinoff. So back in the 1990s, Rockwell spun off their metal finishing operation, turned it into, believe it or not, the largest contract metal finisher in the United States. And, and it was a quarter million square foot plant dedicated to, uh, to metal finishing, surface finishing, if you can imagine. We treated 500 gallons a minute of, 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 um, of wastewater in that, in that plant. So it was just, it was just awesome, as awesome as it is to be, a you know, associated with FANUC, awesome to be able to run a, a Rockwell automation spinoff. They didn't, they didn't spare any expense in, expense in building that plant. But one of the things that I used to joke about, we would deal with all these, chem- <clears throat> excuse me, chemical suppliers. So they would have a, uh, somebody was managing the plating tank and somebody was managing the, the soak tank or the cleaning tank, somebody else, the acid activation. And so you'd have all these different chemical suppliers, and I used to like to try to get the same company 
responsible for the whole production line because you're exactly right. You call the the cleaning guy and he's oh that's the plating guy's yeah. plating. I said that's the first the first thing in their play, playbook was blame somebody else. Yep. And then if, if that doesn't work, well then okay we'll dig a little bit deeper. And you're kind of saying the same thing with some yeah. of these component technologies, which is why it's so important that we have people that understand all of them and can troubleshoot and problem solve, and so on. Really really important. Um, and a really, really important aspect of the education work you're doing, of the integration work you're doing, and I'm, I'm glad we had the opportunity to, to chat about that as we point young people toward great careers in mm-hmm. doing those types of things and troubleshooting, understanding these technologies. We touched on it a little bit about, you know, just the, the incredible opportunities of students coming into manufacturing. If I'm a student, I'm thinking about a career choice. You know, you're not only somebody who's doing this amazing integration work with FANUC on the education side. To your point, you're also, uh, you know, a very, very well-respected, huge integrator of manufacturing technologies. What What's the job market look like if I'm a student looking at a career in manufacturing? Oh, today's job market, um, really the student has the pick of where they want to go. And so we... We often talk about where you where do you want to live? You want to live in Colorado? There's jobs in Colorado. No matter where you want to be in the United States or in maybe even in North America, sure. that job opportunity is there. And it's up to you. It's up to the student of how advanced they want to be and how they want to take it. It's not up to the employer. Um, we want them to advance, but really it's up to the student. So if you've got an aggressive student that says, I want to do something, I want to be somebody, I want to travel, I want to... Come to AP and T- APT and work because you can be traveling all the time. You could be also at work all the time. It just depends upon what it is. But we have young people that come in and they enjoy the travel mm-hmm. and see in the United States. And we're literally putting in robots all over the United States. Awesome. But the opportunities there, not only financially, but gratification of, of what do they want to do in life? They, they've got their pick. They don't have to, they don't have to settle. Pick what your interest is. Pick what you're good at, and those jobs are available to you. Yeah, jobs absolutely are available to you. And and jobs that, to your point, I mean, it's not, you think about a job in manufacturing, yeah, you may be at one plant, and if that's your thing, and you're raising a family, or you've got a need to, to kind of stay close to home or what have you, great opportunities there. You also get into one of my favorite topics, which is what I call work-life integration. Um, you know, forever we talked about work-life balance. I could never make it work, right? I mean, you know, especially in manufacturing, um, where I always tell people you're 30 seconds away from your next crisis, right? You never know when there's going to be a customer that expedites an order. You never know when there's going to be a, maybe a, a production issue that needs to get it addressed. Um, it's really, really hard, at least it was for me in manufacturing, to draw f- really thick lines between my personal life and my and mm-hmm. my work life. So I adopted a long time ago this whole philosophy of work-life integration, which is you just blend it all together, right? Mm-hmm. And for somebody that likes that, to your point, yeah, you might be working on a an installation, and I've seen your team and worked with your team on projects where they're traveling from a place like like Hicksville, Ohio, and they're coming up to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Um, mm-hmm. Totally different, you know, not that different culture per se, but but you know, different topography and and different things to do, different types of people, and and it could be there, it could be going to Mexico City, or it could right. be going to you know to Ontario or, or or what what have you. Um, all kinds of opportunities in the world of manufacturing to blend that work and that that life into work life integration. I just just last week I had a meeting, big machining company up in uh, central Wisconsin. In fact, the uh, one of the leaders of that company, Brad Stasevsky, is going to be with us. Uh, Point Precision is the company. He's going to be with us later in the week on the podcast. He'll be down here at IMTS. Um, had that meeting. We got done about two o'clock. I had a quick conference call that I had to get on, and I drove to a lake about an hour away. I had an inflatable. Um, uh, inflatable paddleboard that I blew up and spent an hour and a half just on yeah. that like beautiful afternoon all in one day of work and, yeah. and same kind of thing in a, in a business like yours and I know because I've worked with your team that that they really know how to balance and how to integrate work and and play in a way that's really really yeah. rewarding so credit so to true. you for creating that for creating that culture and credit to you also for really innovating in this whole world of education technology we're here at the international manufacturing technology show i don't know how many times i've been at this show it's a, it's a highlight it's every other year it's in chicago the technology here is amazing the rate at which companies are innovating uh, even yeah. more amazing and i think yeah. you know there was a time when you come and you might see two or three new things and but it's not the case anymore everybody's got new stuff tell us a little bit about some of the things that apt is featuring this week at imts so we've got what's called a CSM, a Connected Smart Manufacturing. And really that was designed by Michael Cook from Rockwell and Paul Aiello from Fanuc to be able to take a, a start with a CNC machine, and at the end you're producing a part that can be sold in the bookstore. Okay. And so you can involve the marketing, you can involve the accounting group, the CNC group, the, the controls or automation group. So we're featuring some of that today. 
Um, we've got a Miller weld cell set up with a robot. Awesome. Um, we're not actually welding apart, but we're simulating welding apart. Yep. Um, we've got a CNC simulator. It's called an MTech Sim. Where if a if a uh, university or a college wants to teach CNC in the classroom, mm -hmm. integrated with a robot, and not have to be out on the shop floor, okay. that can be folded up and, and go into a classroom. Awesome. So that's some of the equipment. And then we, the last one we got is what's called an ILS, Industrial Learning System. Okay. That's really developed with uh, Rockwell, and it's all the pieces of the CSM. So it's your beginning level of saying, okay, we're going to start off with learning all the pieces from day one and how to wire them and how they communicate and how they go together. And by the end of that year, now you're into the individual assemblies, assembles, and then you're into the full CSM. Got it. So we've been working with Rockwell for a couple of years developing this, mm -hmm. and we're launching that here at IMTS. Awesome. So. And I did get an opportunity to get a sneak preview of that about a month or two ago, and, yeah. and uh, really cool technology. And, and I say especially for, you know, that, that technical college, instructor, the dean, who likes the combination of great learning opportunities with that real hands-on experience, understanding how we integrate authentic manufacturing technology, really playing into that that integration space, that ILS is a, is a really yeah. nice nice solution for that, fits really well into the marketplace. So credit to you, just the rate at which you guys innovate is really, really impressive, Thank and the you. partnerships that you've built. Um, I'm, I'll always be a fan of Miller Electric being a Wisconsinite. Um, you know, they're, they're headquartered in my home state in Appleton, Wisconsin, great relationships with them. Um, in, in, in all of your, you know, the folks that we've been able to work with at APT, all first class, you know, you're a values-driven organization without a question. It's always fun to be with you, Tony. I'm going to ask you one last question as we wrap up our time here today, and it's a question we ask every single guest here on the Tech Ed Podcast, and I know you're going to have a great answer for it, and that is if you had one piece of advice for a high school sophomore, what would that piece of advice be? Man. If you're a high school sophomore, um, you really need to visit some of the integrators, some of the equipment builders, some of the robotics company, and and really think about think about that trade or that career for you. Um, I'm I'm a hundred percent all for college universities. I'm also a hundred percent for the trade schools and the community colleges and the career centers. To think about doing that in high school and going to a high school career center and understanding robotics or machining or auto body or, or uh, building homes or whatever it is to be that hands-on person. I personally was that. Um, I went to a high school career center and then I went through a machine. I went to a high school career center for auto body. I got certified as a welder. So then after high school, I started out welding for two or three years. Then I hired it at a machine shop and went through a four-year apprenticeship program as a tool maker. So that's my background. Awesome. And today I'm the president and founder of APT. So no matter what you want to do, don't don't limit it to saying, oh, I have to go to college or I have to go to a university and I really don't even know what I'm going into. But look at the trades and, and really get focused on the trades. Absolutely. You know, if you think about, it, you know, if I'm going to the doctor, I probably need a doctor that went through a, you know, a PhD program. Right. And if I'm if I'm hiring an accountant, I probably need somebody that earned yeah. a CPA. Those are just some career opportunities. And there are just such a huge myriad uh, of career opportunities in the world of manufacturing that to your point young people have to get out and they have to see and they have to experience firsthand which I know is a, a huge part of the work that you do at APT. I was always a hands-on kinesthetic learner um, and I, I tell people you know the world of manufacturing is that world where you can start out sweeping the floor and end up running the company or pause anywhere along the way and have a really really awesome career supporting your family doing interesting work you can go to a, a technical college, a community college, get a huge head start on sweeping the floor. Um, but it is really that place where it just doesn't matter where you came from. There's huge opportunities for you in the future. You're just a perfect example of that, Tony. Uh, a great friend, a great partner. Always fun spending time with you. Take, I know you got a really busy week, so thank you so much for taking a little bit of time for us on the Tech uh, Ed Podcast Thanks for today. allowing me to be a part of it. Appreciate it.